Hello my friends and fellow Betsies. It is Tuesday, which means that I have arbitrarily designated this as response day. And this Tuesday, I want to respond not to one specific video, but to a couple of videos that have been made by the same Betsy. See, Abby's been talking a lot about stories. It's their entire theme this month. But a lot of this past week was about specific types of stories, six word, acronyms, circular stories. And to be honest, it's usually not what I think about when I am creating a story. My content dictates my form, not the other way around. And that's not a dig on anyone who is really into form. I just, I focus so much on the story that, you know, I don't have a word count in mind. Something can take 800 words and I'm happy. Something can take 5,000 words and I'm happy. It's whatever the story needs. You know, I've been in the middle of writing something and realized that I changed tense halfway through because that was fitting the vibe more and then had to go back and fix it for the rest of it in order to make it all actually cohesive. So form isn't my thing, usually but every once in a while, I get an idea. So over the summer, I was on a bit of a time kick. I rewatched Back to the Future. I was working on a time travel play. I was thinking about one of my D&D characters and the potential to live thousands of years longer than everybody else in the campaign, while my other D&D character is actively messing with time and time travel and all of that fun stuff. So I was thinking a lot about time this summer, or at least at one very specific point in the summer. And so I wrote this little poem and it's nothing great or groundbreaking in my opinion, but what really makes it special is the form. Since it's about time, I wanted to have it mirror a clock. So the first line is one word, the second is two, the third is three, so on and so forth until we get to 12 words in a line. And then it goes down 11, 10, 9, 8. And I was just messing with the idea of time and clocks and cycles, but it seems sort of relevant to what Abby's been talking about. And so, you know, I figured, why the heck not? It, it is literally written on the back of the script because where else would I put a poem? She is eternal, constant presence in the natural world. Seasons come and seasons go. Surely autumn hasn't passed her by. An hour ago, the leaves were green, and now the fresh snow lies upon the earth. Surely she could not have missed an entire season in the blink of an eye. And yet she knows time has no master, not even an immortal being like herself. Even she, a goddess, must bend a knee to his cruel whims. She has tried countless times to fashion for herself a companion. But no matter how hale and hardy they start out, None of them live as long as she does. They wither away in front of her eyes, too dry to mourn them after centuries of weeping over her lost creations. Perhaps time simply lives longer and she's his pet. The time when she withers. Like I said, it's just sort of the vibe I had in like one very specific week and I like it, and it seemed relevant, so I figured I'd share it. Alright, my friends and fellow Betsies, 